Hi, I'm Jen with Pepper Hero, and today we're going to be demystifying snapdragons. We're going to talk about seed starting, and then we're also going to talk about planting and how to plant to make sure that you have nice, tall, strong stems to be able to use for cutting. All right, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna take a 72 cell tray. We're gonna fill it up with seed starting soil. After we have our seed starting medium placed into the cell tray, we're gonna now take our little watering device and you can use a spray bottle, it doesn't matter. I just happen to have a hose hooked up. I'm gonna get each cell a little bit moist and this is just gonna provide a basis for our seeds to be able to, to uh, start their germination process. So I'm just getting all of my seed starting medium a little bit moist. I'm gonna let this water sink in, settle in, and then we're gonna start our seed starting process. Types of snapdragons that we like to grow here at Pepper Harrow are the opus variety of snapdragons. We also like to grow Potomac. So uh, those are the two in particular that are really good about producing nice, tall, strong stems. Everything else, eh, it's iffy. Sometimes we do Chantilly and we love Chantilly because they look really frilly and pretty in spring, but for the last few years we haven't done it. Uh, another new one that we're trying this year is called Lucky Lips and Apple Blossom, and you'll see those as we show you kind of some of our seeds starting and, and what they look like in the seed tray. I have the water that has moistened into the seed starting medium, now the seeding part. I don't know about you guys, but I see these people that are uh, literally taking like a little tip of a pencil and picking up each seed and dibbling each seed into a hole. That is not how I do it. Call me a renegade flower farmer, but I'm losing my eyesight and ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm just going to take these seeds. I'm going to put them in my hand. They're so tiny. As you all know, uh, snapdragons are so incred incredibly tiny. So instead of trying to put each seed in each individual cell, I'm just going to take it and grab it like grains of salt. I'm just going to pinch it. And like salt, I'm just going to rub it lightly between my fingers and semi watch and see if one drops in each cell. I'm not being exact here. If I end up getting more than one seed in a cell, I'll show you how we're gonna deal with that and it's okay. We're gonna go back later after they have germinated and we're gonna end up separating out the seedlings into their own little cell manually, but like just get your seed started. That's what you need to do. Don't focus on trying to just put one seed in each cell. It doesn't matter. You can go back and fix it later and I'll show you again how to do that. So I'm almost done with this 72 cell tray. You guys saw how quick that was. What, it took me 30 seconds. So uh, that's step one. My seeds are in the tray. That's all I'm going to do. You could provide a light dusting of vermiculite, but it doesn't really matter. They're gonna do their thing in this cell tray as is. I didn't cover them. They're literally basically on the surface of the tray. When I come in and water, again, I'll water a little bit more forcefully than what you saw how I wet the tray down. Some of the dirt may end up covering the seed, but this is how I get my best germination. No frills. I don't put it, place it deeply into the seed starting soil. I just basically surface though my snapdragons and it works every single time. I'm ready to stick my label in and I literally just put snaps and white. That's all I do. It also works if you just take a piece of masking tape and place it on the front of your tray. That's very a very successful way to label your plants as well, but this is how I do it. So I'm gonna take my tray now and I'm gonna take it and place it under the lights up on my seed starting rack. I'm gonna let my seeds stay here for about eight to 10 days. They should sprout in about eight to 10 days. I'll see them popping up. And once I see them popping up, I'm gonna let them get some nice growth on them before I go to my next step. This is a tray of Lucky Lips Snapdragons, and you can see that there are seeds coming up in each cell. This particular one has about five little seedlings coming in. I'm gonna wait for those to get at least four sets of leaves, and then I'm going to take them and I'm going to end up splitting them out and transplanting them once they get large enough. After I have my seeds started and coming up, I told you that I wait for the four, first four leaves to form on my snaps before I separate them out. So this is the next step. I filled another tray, another 72 cell tray with seed starting mix. And I basically separated them out from that existing tray that we were working 
working with and then placed them in here. It almost filled up a brand new 72 cell tray. I'm just a few short, but I basically took them out and I transplanted those extra little plants into the 72 cell tray. So I pulled them apart, I popped them in, and the next step here that I need to do is water them in. But you can see how easy this is. The most important part is to do it quick to get them to germinate and get them started and then separate them after the fact. This is easier to do than to spend 10 minutes trying to get one little tiny seed dot in every single tray. And I think your success goes up because if you happen to put two seeds in per, per cell, one of them's gonna survive, one of them's gonna sprout, but you can see how easy this is. Way easier than straining your eyes and trying to overthink the process a little bit. I'm gonna let these grow out in the greenhouse for, eh, maybe another two weeks before I actually transition them totally outside and start, start to harden them up. You know, roughly three weeks before these little seedlings will end up getting planted out in the garden. The next thing I wanna show you is where I plant them outside and how close together I plant them to be able to get the giant snapdragons that you see we grow. Now that our tray of snapdragons is hardened off, they're still really tiny, it's okay. I'll show you what some I planted a couple weeks ago look like. You can plant them as small as this into the ground as long as they have four little leaves showing on the greenery you should be okay to go ahead and plant. So we're going to plant in six inch hole fabric here. The closer you plant your snapdragons together the better. That's going to force our stems to grow as tall as possible. Some of you have asked about the secret to how we transfer our little seedlings from the tray into the ground. The answer is this little butter knife. I'm basically going to stick my little butter knife in scoop my little seedling out and I'm gonna take it, dibble with my fingers in the ground and then transplant and place that little snapdragon in the ground. It's gonna start growing like amazing. I hope this helped you demystify some of the process about how to start and be successful with snapdragons. I've seen a lot of interaction on social media where a lot of people are confused and having a hard time with snapdragons. They're not hard. Give yourself a little bit of grace. Take some time to practice, experiment, and see what works for you. And the process I just did today, it may not work for you, but I'm hoping it gave some ideas of some things that I do here that you may be able to implement in your own gardens. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for joining today and happy growing.